This example, I'm going to show you how to uh, work up a doily, this lace doily, like a table mat or a place mat, um, something like you might put under plants. Um, I'm only going to demonstrate a very small section of it, but you would work up the entire doily in exactly the same way I'm going to do here. Um, this one is actually on a, a wood, wood grain table, but I'm not going to really concentrate on the wood grain. I'm going to concentrate on showing how to give um, the effect of it sitting on top of that surface so I'm going to show you how to do the shadows and everything behind it but really um, in this example we're only going to be using a very limited palette it's going to be about focusing on you drawing in that's going to be the most important thing to, to get all these little um, sections in the right places so I'm just going to start with um, a colour called brown earth just to give an indication of the background colour. I'm using Derwent Colour Soft pencils and I'm working on a Bristol board surface. So really it's just going to be filling in these little se segments that I've outlined in my drawing in. And what I'm paying attention to here is the cotton that this is um, crocheted in or made out of is obviously quite um, fluffy at the edges so I'm just going to make sure I've not got too harsh of lines at the edges of these cells just giving a bit of a um, not a uniform line when I'm working around them so I've got little bumps to suggest the fibres as I'm working but just filling these in quite solidly, not too hard. Because I want to be able to um, give an illusion of the doily sitting on the table, so I want to be able to put some shadows in. So I'm not working them too, too dark of a tone, but filling them in completely. And then there's some tiny little ones. So as long as you've done your drawing inaccurately, you've got a good line drawing to follow, this really is just a matter of colouring in, it's colouring in all these cells and the, the surface behind. Right, so each one of those little units is filled in now. Just going to make them even them out a little bit in tone, make them all similar. I'm going to switch to um, a dark brown and I'm just going to, the light on this picture is falling that way so my shadows are cast down this bottom edge so I'm just going to follow the outlines and work in a little shadow all the way around using quite a bit of pressure. I know that this is the only colour I'm going to be using on this well, maybe I might put a bit of indigo over the top to really get some depth, but I, 
I know that this is, I'm going to want it dark. So I'm pressing on quite hard. I'm really looking at the photograph closely to see where these shadows echo the line of my doily and where they extend even more. I think uh, the doily is not quite sitting flat on the table, so there's some areas where the shadow is cast a bit longer. Like there. And then again, on the underside of all of these edges where that cast shadow will fall, just in the same way, remembering what I said about um, the texture of the fibres, so still allowing some little wiggles in your lines for that. You can see you're already starting to get the effect that the white is sitting on top of the brown. Obviously if you did want that wood grain, say, behind it or some texture behind it, you would be working with your strokes or going in that like this in the, in the same direction so that it would give that effect. Just do that one cell for you and you can see. So you do the shadows in the same way but you might want to take some of that shadow colour into some stripes. You can see it's starting to pop out from the page just by doing the one darker colour. And we've not added anything onto the white yet, so this is just how you can suggest form just by um, the shadow it creates on the surface it's sitting on. Now I'm going to um, just switch to a grey. I'm going to come and it's really probably hard for you to see on camera, but um, each of these you can see the separate strings going in. So I'm just going to suggest that they're like kind of little chains. So I'm just going to suggest the centres of the chains and maybe a little bit of the outside, just darken off at the edges almost joining into the shadows we've just drawn. Suggesting little cables of fibre. Just putting a tiny bit of texture in on it. Not really not really adding much because you don't want to take away too much from the contrast of the white on the dark. Because that's what's that's what's making it work to pop out from the background and it, it is very faint these are those just some tiny areas where I'm just using dots because it actually you can see right through the chain of fabric to the underneath color Happy with that, and then I'm just going to um, go in with an indigo, indigo blue, and just take that depth of shadow a little bit darker, just in the very underneath of where where the um, the doily sits on top. So just a very small line. Don't worry if it's looking a bit too blue, we can go and put a bit of red over the top just to adjust the colour.
And if you wanted it to um, to look even more as if it's standing off, you can darken down the centres of these little cells even more. This is just my um, red. I'm taking over the top of the blue now to correct the colours. I'm actually I might just darken it, the whole thing down with that, change the colour of the background a bit, but take the tone down. Change back to the, the brown earth from the beginning. The better. And back to the red. This is that original colour. I'm just going to take it a bit darker. It does help that in this case that it's such a high contrast thing, something white sitting on something dark, it is easier to make it look just by a little bit of shadow that's sort of popping off from it. But anything sitting on another surface you would treat in the same way, anything that's going to cast a little shadow. Just paying attention to the direction the light's coming from and then outlining the edges with a couple of dark tones darker than your main colour and you're going to get that effect. Just touching up the red and the blue, just in areas that I've seen a couple of areas where I forgot to do it before. So there you go. So I hope that's helped to um, just give you a couple of pointers on how you can give the effect of something, a piece of cloth, sitting on top of another surface such as a table.